We'll give you praise and we'll give you glory. Thank God. Amen. You may be seated. Once again, to the mothers, we're very happy to have you uh, here today. And specifically, we're thankful that God has blessed you to be who you are and have given to you what he has given because you are the difference. You don't make a difference. You are the difference in every aspect of our living here on earth. God bless you. Want to say relative to the testimony, we're thankful for what we heard in the testimony. Uh, that's the reason why it is important when the Lord speaks to us that we accept what God says. Because often when God speaks to us, the things that God says to us seem to be opposite, opposite of what God says. God will say you are healed and looks like you get worse. God will say you are rich and look like you're getting poorer. But if you can hold fast to the word and don't allow your environment to cause you to opt out of the word, you will find that God will act upon what he says. He will act upon what he says. Amen? That's the reason why whenever the Lord is moving in the congregation and we are rejoicing, I say to you that God comes into our midst to bless us. Amen. He never comes into our midst just for us to shout and dance. He comes into our midst to bless us. Now, we may shout and dance as a result of the blessing, but never reduce what God's purpose of coming to just that that satisfies our emotion because God always comes in to bless. Mother Haynes, it's so good to see you. God bless you. And I'm going to ask the bearers of the um, packages if you would be so kind. Uh, I think they said they had one for Sister Winona, and she came in late. So if you all would give her whatever it is you're passing out, we appreciate it much. All right. I feel good. I feel extremely well. And I feel like there will be a word that God will give that will be helpful to us on today. Uh, glad to see uh, the uh, our co council person of yesteryear and our judge. <laughs> amen. Bless you. So good to see you and your mother. Good to see you. And amen. We we'll just leave and there. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, the word of the Lord from St. Mark, third chapter. St. Mark, third chapter. I want to just say to those of you who are present, council person Allen was in our couples class today. Amen. Along with uh, her uh, supporter. <laughs> Amen. All right. We, we enjoy them in the class. The word at the, it, it's really, I'm going to start at the 31st and I'm going go down to the 35th. They have it right, but I'm changing there came then his brethren and his mother, and standing without, sent unto him, calling him. And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. And he answered them, saying, Who is my mother or my brethren? And he looked around about on them which said about him and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. I want to talk to you today and let you know that irrespective of how it may appear, it's a family affair. It's a family affair. 
We have to look at our society today and understand that we're all here and we're here for purpose. God has given to us a challenge. He has given to us opportunities. He has given to us a reason for being and then he has given to us uh, thoughts, concepts. Uh, he has given to us plans, but also he has made it possible for us to have the method by which we operate so that the plans that we may have may be uh, uh, fulfilled and completed. And he's also allowed us to know that never does he intend for any of us to be here by ourselves and to do things by ourselves and just for ourselves. When we think about family, we have to think about the institution that was established in the book of Genesis because he, God, is the one who instituted the family. He had Adam, uh, mankind, and Adam personally, and then he had Eve, and together they were able to bring about a reproduction, and then we have uh, more people coming to the fore as a result of them through uh, Cain and then other uh, siblings thereof, and the, multi the multiplication continues as we look at things in life and see how things are. Thank God for mothers, because uh, we have to understand that uh, it is important that we are able to have seed and seed planted and then we have to have someone who can carry the seed, uh, you know, the conception with regard to the egg and carry the seed to maturity and the deliverance thereof and then have coming uh, through the kind of uh, person uh, who can receive not only the flesh and not only the uh, mental faculties but also the spirit in which God can place his spirit, therefore persons can be like God. Because it's impossible for us to be like God outside of our spirit person. Your flesh will never be like God. There's no way that your flesh can be like God. And the reason that your flesh cannot be like God, because God's a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is not flesh. We are flesh, but God is spirit. And since God is spirit, it takes the spirit of God in us to cause us to be who we are. When we look at this lesson on today, uh, there is uh, obviously attention given to uh, Mary. There's attention given to uh, one of her sons. And the information given is that they're on the outside of where we are and they, they want your attention. And he says quite plainly, who is my mother? I want to know who is my mother. And when we look at things today, we have to come to a place of understanding that it takes more than child delivery to be a mother. In, in, in the sense of where we are talking about as it relates to uh, the Bible and the significance of the Bible. Because there are some women in here today, uh, and I am looking at you, and you have not had any biological children, but you have been a mother to children. You have been a mother. And for me to say that only those who biologically give birth then it, it seems to me that I am missing the uh, understanding of the word of the Lord because I am narrowing uh, where he is and his thoughts to the thoughts of mankind and what we perceive to be uh, the only way that you can be a mother. As a, matter, as a matter of fact, the interesting thing here is he says, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. And so, so whether, whether or not you have been a person who has produced or a person who has entertained the principles of God and have shared those principles with someone else, 
to teach them the strengths that they have and the weaknesses uh, that are about them. If you've been that person who has given of yourself and try to help others to move away from complacency and, and stagnation and have, have allowed yourself to, to reach out and grab and pull up and hold up and instruct, inspire, motivate, uh, uh, educate. If you've been that kind of an individual, uh, then you can say, I am a mother, or you can say, I am a brother, or you can say, I am a sister. But whatever you conclude, if you've been with anybody and helped anybody, and, and, and you've had people to help you, it's not all about yourself. It's a family affair. It's about more. It takes, it takes more to help us to get to where we need to be, irrespective of what background you come from, irrespective of what uh, location geographically you've come from, if we could all come together and bring ourselves to a place. One thing about Jesus that I learned in, the, in, in, in Mark, the uh, first chapter of Mark in particular, one of the things that I learned about him is that he was baptized of John, and when he was baptized of John, we understand that the that 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 the Holy Ghost came upon him, and it was is somewhat uh, in the form of a dove. It was it was not a dove. It done, no dove came upon him, uh, but the voice that came out of heaven said, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased." And because he was pleased with him. Uh, doing what God would have him to do. John baptized him and that pleased the Lord. He, he accepted being baptized and that pleased the Lord. And then the thing that starts happening is that uh, he, he uh, starts off in ministry. We have to understand that uh, he was 30 years of age when he gets started. Uh, we know what he did in the temple at the age of 12, but that was not ministry. Uh, so now he's into ministry. And his ministry lasts for three and one half years. But before he got started, he did something that all of us need to pay attention to. And that is uh, he established a family. Now, how did he establish a family? What he did quite clearly is that he called Peter and Andrew, who were brothers, and he called them to be disciples, praise God. And, and then later on, he calls James and John, who are the sons of Zebedee, to be disciples. And then uh, uh, subsequently, he also calls others to be disciples. And you know about them, Matthew, Thomas, Thaddeus, Judas, Bartholomew, and all. He calls them uh, to be, because he's establishing a family. And he says, you have been men uh, as far as Peter and Andrew's concern and James and John are concerned. You have been men who have been fishing, but you've been fishing for fish. I'm going to make you fishermen of men. In other words, the whole purpose of my coming is to establish the family, the family of God. Isn't it great to know that as he establishes the family, he is consistent with where his father is? Not only does he have men, not only does he have uh, uh, men, but he has women. He has mothers and he has sisters as a part of his family. If we are going to be the kind of ministry that we're supposed to be, we cannot be one that's exclusive. We have to be one that's inclusive. We have to say to women, thou art welcome. We have to say to young ladies and young men, thou, you are welcome. We have to say to the old and the young, you're welcome. The rich and the poor, the educated and the uneducated, irrespective of who you are, what color you are, uh, where you've come from, we have to say that you are welcome. The door 
doors of the church have to be open to anyone who wants to come in, irrespective of what we think and how we think it. We have to open our doors to everyone because everybody who will do the will of his father, everybody who will do the will of God is a part of him. The Bible says that those who will do his will, they represent brother, they represent sister, and they represent mother. Now, he did not say father. And there's a reason why he did not say father, because he is the only begotten son. And then, then nobody else could be father, his father. God himself is his only father. Are you listening to me? And so we are brothers. I don't care if we're 90 years old, we're still brother. If we were here at the time of Methuselah, we're still brother. Cannot be his father, no way, no how. But we can be mother, we can be sister, and we can be brother. Why can we be mother? Because Mary was mother. Are you still with me? Mary was earthly mother. And then when we style the church, we often call the church mother church. We often call that mother. Uh, the assembly of the people together, we call mother. We call mother earth. And so we use the terminology mother. And that's all right, but we cannot interchange that as, as it relates to being his father because he only has God and he's the begotten of the father. Are you still with me here? And so one of the things that he does, he gathers, he gathers the people and, and he establishes his earthly family and, and, and not, not, listen to me, not just those brothers of, of Mary and Joseph, but he gets people who are not uh, in the blood lineage, but he gets people who are believers and who are followers and they go with him. And as they go with him, he goes into the synagogue. And one of the first things he does in the synagogue, he begins to cast out devils. He begins to cast out demons. You know something I believe? Years ago, I believe that the mothers of yesteryear used to gather the people around the house table and the dining room and the kitchen table because sometimes we didn't have a dining room. House was not large enough to have a dining room. We had a kitchen table. And we would sit around the kitchen table and we would have prayer. And, and, and the mother would seem to be the one who would be guiding us to that. Although she would ask the father, the husband, would you pray? But the mother was the one who seemed to be organizing and getting us there. There's something about the mother. I don't know. It's just something about the mother. Something about the mother. Thank God for the mother. Thank God for the mother. I, I, I thank God for the mother. I would think that, that more than Sister Buchanan is thanking God for the mother. I would think that. But I'm, I, I am so thankful about my mother, praise God, because my mother used to teach us on Monday nights we would have Bible study in our house. And sometimes it would be the same scripture over and over again. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And we talked about love. We talked about love. And she that's one thing she instilled within us as children about love. That's why I love people today, praise God, because she taught me about love. And I, I, I think that we need to go back to the table of where we dine together because it was at that table where we had prayer. It was at that table where we had communication. It was at that table we discussed things. Right now, we don't move at the table to eat together because we got so many places that we eat. We got five televisions in our house, and those five televisions in our house, when we get ready to eat, one person is in the dining room eating. One person is in the bedroom eating. One person is in uh, the family room eating. One person is in another, in another place, and we're in different places eating. Team, and, and we're not coming together having a sharing. I'm going to tell you now, it's a family affair. We've got to learn how to go back to the table and stop separating ourselves. We, we separate ourselves and we, we do things uh, uh, in and of ourselves and we don't do it together. But we've got to bring ourselves to a level of appreciating the family structure that God has given to us. And men, I'm going to tell you right now, now, there's nothing wrong with listening to your wives and, and the mother of your children. 
There's nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, it might be helpful to listen. Uh, how Queen uh, Deborah, Deborah in the Bible, when, when the man of God, the king wanted to know whether or not he should fight the battle, should he go to where the wall was, it was Deborah who heard from God. And when Deborah heard from God, Deborah said, he said, go ahead and do it. I'm going to tell you, God does speak to mothers. God does speak to women. Not just the men unto whom he gives a message, but he gives a message to women equally as well. And we need to be excited. If you have a praying mother, if you have a praying wife, if you have a praying sister, if you have a praying anyone other than yourself in your house, you ought to be thankful. Oh, yes, you ought to be thankful. I thank God for cathedral of praise. I'm not the only one in here who prays. I'm not the only one who hears God. There are people in here who hear the Lord. We need a house of people who hear God. We need a house of people who pray. We need a house of people who are anointed. We need a house of people who can lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. We need a house under the anointing of an almighty God. We are living in a time of separatism. We are living in a time of segregation. And I'm not talking about race. And I'm not talking about age. I'm not talking about ethnicity. I'm not talking about geographic location. I'm talking about what we do in the church. It's a shame before God how we operate in the church when it has to be a family affair. When I think about when Solomon was there to dedicate the temple, the singers came. The Levites came. Those who played the instruments those who were responsible for the vocals, they came. Amen. And something happened when they did it. There was an anointing and the glory of God filled the temple. And when the glory filled the temple that was being dedicated, the Bible says the minister could not minister for reason of the cloud. I'm going to tell you there's an anointing that can come into the house of God. There's a power that can come into the house of God. And what we have to do, we won't have to do it because God has already done it. Yeah. Who's more insightful? Who's more powerful? Who has more wisdom? Who has more understanding? Who has more influence than what an almighty God has? We may not look like, we may not act alike but we ought to be alike. Amen. Amen. Allow me, and I'm, I'm, I'm about two-thirds finished. Amen. Praise God. Come on, uh, Brother Austin, after you get through drinking. <laughs> brother Lance, come on, brother. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on up, Sister Doja. Yeah, yeah, Sister Davina, come on up, leave your mama <laughs> for the moment, for the moment. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Yeah, pretty shoes. To tell Thaddeus you got on pretty shoes. <laughs> We praise God for, for them. And uh, they have different capacities. They do different things. And then you can look and see how they are dressed. And we praise God for that. Each, each of them. Now, the interesting thing is that uh, some may appear to be a little bit more casual than others. Uh, but that's But that's all right. Do, do you all understand? Because, because the God we serve is not in our clothes. He's, he's in our spirit, so they're more casual. Uh, if you looked at Sister Dozier, one would think that she's definitely on her way to church. Because she has on her hat. 
amen, and shoes and the matching. And then we could say that um, Sister Davina could be on her way to church or she could be going some other place as well. Amen. But for the most part, you would definitely say that Dozier is on her way to church. But yeah, yeah. And, and, and she could be going to church or wherever. And then we come over here to these men and we could say that they too could be going to church because what they do in church is different from what they do in church. All right, what they do is they play instruments. And most people who play instruments are more relaxed in their dress than those who don't. Those who are dealing with vocals, they're usually a little bit more dressed than, and sometimes with, 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 with robes on. They just happen not to have on robes. But they handle the vocals and they handle the instruments. Now, the point is, though, that they are better served if they have the accompaniment of instruments. They can do it on their own, but when they have instruments to go with them, it's so much better, particularly when they're in the same key. And when they're playing, they, when, they, when they are playing the song or the music of the song that they are singing. It's a terrible thing to have the vocals in one a key and the instruments in another. And it's also, it's a different thing that when you have them playing going up yonder while they're singing, we shall overcome. The point is, the point is, what is the, what, what causes them to be together? And then what causes them to be separate? If they allow themselves to work in their own egotism, then they may, they may come up with anything and say anything. Or they may come up with anything and play anything. But when they understand the purpose of their being, particularly at this location, then they will, they will, they will come. Somebody has to bring them together. And say, okay, we're coming to the house of God. Now, all of them have to know something about God or they wouldn't be here. All of them have to appreciate something about God or they wouldn't be here. But then they all don't have to, at the knowing God and appreciating God, they don't have to be on one accord. Something else causes them to be on one accord. There has to be a driving force that causes them to be on one accord. We can call it whatever we want it, want to, but if the anointing of the Lord, if the Spirit of God through the Word of God is, is resident within their spirit, then they will lose sight of their individuality and their own egotism and began to do things in accordance with the way that God would have them to be done for this church, for this service. So then when the music comes, uh, they're not over there doing something and with preoccupation of thought while they're over here doing something with preoccupation of thought. Rather than that, they have come together and they have decided that this is what we're going to play and this is what we're going to sing and this is what God is going to do because it's not my affair and it's not your affair it's a family affair and we're in the family of God and so we're going to do it to the glory and to the honor of God in other words the spirit of the Lord that, that, that's resident within their spirit causes them to work in harmony absent of that spirit it won't work praise God but with that spirit it will work and I'm going to tell you that every family has a leader. I said every family has a leader. And in every home there is a leader. And brethren, I, you, you, whatever we think about it, sometimes it's that mother who has the most influence in that house. We praise God for the dads. We praise God for the fathers. But often it is... The mother who has the most influence. In this house, who has the most influence? God through the Holy Ghost 
has the most influence. If the Holy Ghost doesn't work, it won't work. If the Holy Ghost is not in charge, we got a problem in here because we have to bow to the influence of the Holy Ghost and tell God whatever you say in the Holy Ghost, that's what we're going to do. This is your church. You are the one who anoints. You are the one who heals. You are the one who delivers. You are the one who makes a way. You are the one in charge in here. Hallelujah. And so, and so whatever happened, and I'm almost through, whatever happened this morning at home, whatever happened to you at home, whatever happened to you at home, whatever happened to you at home, and whatever was going on while you were driving over here, when you stepped into the house of the Lord, you left everything outside the church, and you said, Lord, have your way. Let your will be done. And it has nothing to do with how you look. It has all to do with who you are. Thank you all so much. Woo. Woo. You see, mothers can help bridge gaps. Mothers can bring sense to those things which are senseless. Mothers can corral. Mothers can caress. Mothers can cause a different feeling to come when we're going through whatever the testing times that we're having. I'm equating just for the moment. I'm just equating for the moment. I am not trying to tell you uh, any gender to place upon the Holy Ghost, but I am saying the Holy Ghost acts from time to time as the, as the entity to corral and the entity to caress and the entity to guide and the entity to lead and the entity to provide. The Holy Ghost does that in the church. If we are to understand how powerful ministry is, we need to understand that it's not strong and powerful for any individual person or a person who is singular. Rather, it is, in fact, a family affair. God has sent people in ministry all over this world for the sole purpose of perfecting uh, his plan and causing the things that he wants to have done to be done. And he's given to us the opportunity to get the job done. And I'm saying to you today, yes, it's Mother's Day. Yes, yes, yes. We have cards. We have some flowers. But we cannot limit what we're doing to just today. If you're going to wear some hats, get them out with some sense of regularity. If you're going to wear some nice suits and dresses to dress up in, do it with regularity. If you're going to pronounce statements that to the glory and the honor of mothers, let's do it with regularity because they're mothers more than just once a day. Mary was the mother of Jesus, the earthly mother, and that was for a lifetime. Praise. Even when he went to the cross, she was yet his mother. When he died, she was yet his mother. And I'm going to tell you, women are their mothers at all times. And we need to listen to what they have to say because they have something good to say to us. Jesus went into the temple. He cast the devils out. In the synagogues, they cast them out. They said, what are you doing here? And he just cast the devils out. Some of the first things that he did, he went into the synagogues. Watch now. You usually go in the synagogues to teach. You usually go in the synagogues to train. But rather than teaching and training, he cast the devil out. How many know mothers know your spirit? They know your spirit. You walking around and acting one way, but mothers know your spirit. Every individual child, you say, you go to the mother and say, Mother, I want you to know that Jane Ann 
did thus and so. That mother would tell you that wasn't Jane Ann. That was Barbara Sue because Jane Ann doesn't do that. Barbara Sue does it. God knows us. He knows our capabilities. He knows our weaknesses and knows our strengths. And he knows how to bring us together where the, where the strong can stand and help encourage those who are weak. I believe today as we are living, we need to do everything that we possibly can to say to one another, you're not out there by yourself. You're not praying by yourself. You're not going through by yourself. You don't have to stand by yourself. It's a family affair. I'll pray for you. You pray for me. And we're going to watch God change things. God has, has a changing agent in this land today, and he's here to help us right now. I just wonder in my heart today, is there anybody willing to hear the voice of God today and let God tell you you're not alone? There are brothers and sisters. Yes, even your mother are here waiting for you, and they want you to know that they're here to help you even right now. I don't want to do it by myself. I want some help. I don't want to go through by myself. I want some help. And I know if I say to God the help that I need, he will let me know who's going to help me because it is a family affair. Amen. Please be seated. Woo! The question today, how many of us are doing the will of the Father? And how many of us are just doing it the way we want? It's amazing to me how that we can become misguided and think that it's not because of God and that it's not because of others. Sometimes when you were doing your miss, there were those who were praying. And it's their prayer. I know, I know we, like, we like to brag about what is going, but sometimes it wasn't about you. It was about who was praying for you. My final point, this is in, it's recorded in, in Mark. Some young men had one of their friends, unfortunately, who had the palsy. And they had him on a cot. Jesus was going into the synagogue and in the cities and healing all manner of disease. They came to this place to take the young man so he could be healed. And they could not because of the crowd. They went to the roof and tore apart the roof and lowered him on the cot to where Jesus was. The young man didn't pray for himself, didn't muster up enough strength to do it on his own. But Jesus saw their faith. And he said because of their faith that he was healed. Saints of God, I'm just trying to communicate. It's a family affair. We may not have the same blood relationship, but it really is a family affair. I said when I first started, I need you, and you need me. Everybody needs somebody sometime. And right now, in the midst of all of what we're doing, we're going to need each other. There's no time for you to act as though you're an island unto yourself. But you're going to need some help. Amen. Ask the Savior 
to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to help you. He will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you come for strengthen. He and he Amen. I'm finished. Give God praise for the word. That was a perfunctory clap. Give God praise for the word. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence, for the anointing that you give to us that destroys the yoke. Thank you, God, because you have given to us reason to be. And we're here because of you, and we thank you for being with us. Thank you, God, because you've given to us mothers, even in your word, when your people were going through trials and testing period you said call for the cunning women and the mourning women and let them take up a wailing for the slain daughters of my people you told us to cry loud and spare not and we are calling even today not only for help but also to give thanks for what you're doing for us save the unsaved reclaim the backslider let the weak say that I'm strong. Let your will be done in our lives. And let us grow stronger and stronger every day. It's in your name we pray. And give thanks. Amen. If you're in the house today and you are looking for the Lord to do something in your life, that represents change. Sometimes we go through the days of our lives and the change that we need, we don't have. But I want to let you know that God has change agents right in our midst, the greatest of whom is that of the Holy Ghost. You can make a change, and you can do it in a moment's time. If you're here today and you need a change in your life, I want you to just hold up your hand wherever you are. It's a brother Maynard, by my hand being held up, I want God to do some things for me. Amen. God bless you, and I see your hand. I see your hand. Anyone else? I see your hand, and I see your hand. God will do it. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. I'll pray for you. You pray and watch God change. I pray for you. We'll watch God. Come on, come on, I'll pray. Mm -hmm. 
those of you who held your hand up, why don't you just meet me right here and I'm going to pray for you. Ooh. And we're going to watch God do it. God's in the changing business. I will, I will, I will. Oh. Watch God. And watch God change me. Ooh. pray for and we're going to watch God do it
Hallelujah, and we give him praise, and we give him glory, and we give him thanks, because God deserves, deserves it. I said God deserves it. God deserves it. Amen. He deserves it. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. 